All right. I have finished Ennis Lobby, both the anime and the manga. Um, I watched the anime first because I want to experience like the voice acting and the music and the setup and just everything with that without knowing anything that was about to happen. Literally nothing aside from a TikTok which did show the shooting the flag scene, but I had no context of anything of that was going on. I went into this knowing nothing. I have not read the post and a slobby chapters of the manga yet. I think I might have got a little bit into it in the anime, but not very much. All right. Um, do I even need to say this was incredible or does that just go without saying? I think it goes without saying that I loved, loved, loved this arc so much. Um, if I had to say that like Water 7 was a setup and Ennis Lobby was the climax and payoff and action and ticking clock elements race against time, save Robin before she gets past the point of no return, it was incredible. Um, I think I cried more often in Water 7, but I cried harder in Ennis Lobby. And overall, this was essentially flawless, though I will give one nitpicky criticism, just my personal taste. I loved what was happening, the story and plot with Robin and even Luffy and his conflict and wanting to beat uh, Lucci so much that the other fights with secondary character, not even secondary characters, just the Straw Hat specifically when they were going up against the other members of CP9. It's not that those fights were bad in any way. They were amazing fights. They showed off new abilities, new skills, and just represent the Straw Hats and their fighting styles very well. It's just, it, see, it was a hold them back from the main plot. It was a boss battle they had to get over in order to get a key to get to Robin to unlock the handcuffs. And I'm just like, I just save Robin. I just want you to save Robin. I don't want to be reading any of these unnecessary fights. Just get to her. They're just there to slow you down so the big bad guy can get Robin across the gate. And it's not a criticism. It's just I did not have the emotional investment in these fights that I had in uh, Luffy versus Lucci or the fight to get to Robin. But that's the only criticism you're getting from me for this arc. It was perfect. I loved everything and I'm still happy all these fights happened. I'm happy we got to see the new skills everyone has. Uh, Sanji's flaming foot of the devil kind of thing going on. Zoro's six sword technique. Remind me to talk about Zoro possibly making a deal with the devil because of his cursed sword in the future. I, I meant to talk about that last time and I forgot. Um, I love, love, love Nami's mirror mirage, sorry, mi yeah, mirage weapon and the weather control. Loved all of that. Um, there was also... Uh, we, when we met the other members of CP9, they had like a ranking thing. This person is the weakest, this one is the next and going up, and Lucci being at level 4,000. I didn't overly like that we were giving them power ranking numbers, and also I feel it was a Dragon Ball reference. I'm not actually sure, but I'm going to assume it was. We're just going to jump right on into it. I have lots, lots, lots to say. Um... So we start off with the crew being reunited. We got Sanji and Luffy, and they, of course, meet Sniper King. And Luffy and Chopper is the only two who are fooled by this. Literally everyone else who have only ever met Usopp the one time is just like, that's the other straw hat. That's um, Usopp. Why? Long nose. Why are they acting like they don't know who this is? So that was hilarious. Love that. Makes complete sense for Luffy and Chopper. Um, but then they have a plan. It's like, okay, Straw Hats, you need to save your strength to fight CP9. You're the only ones with the skills and strength strong enough to do this. So the Frankie family and Galila, they're going to go with the first wave of attack, open up the doors, clear a path for you so you can get to Robin swiftly. Everyone's all right. We got a plan. Luffy, who is just, I'm not waiting. So he... You're supposed to wait five minutes. Five minutes. That's all he had to wait for them to clear a path for him. 
Monkey, I'm not waiting for anything. No hesitation. I will fight the world to save Robin. D. Luffy jumps over the gate. Gum Gum fruits his way across the Ennis lobby to get to Robin. He is going over the walls. He is fighting the Marines and Navy. He is not slowing down or hesitating. They stop him at some point and is just like, we have 10,000 men here. How many crew did you think to bring? And he's just like, cool, I don't care. It's just me. Get out of my way. I've come to get Robin back. He is a force of nature. No one can stop him. Chaotic everywhere. At one point in time, the guy in charge down at the gates is just like calling up to the main CP9 office and it's like, director, Monkey D. Luffy is here. We can't stop him. And the director, who is an idiot and we will talk about later, is just like, what do you mean you can't stop him? He's one guy. You're the entire Navy. This is like the center of justice. How, what is the casualties? And the guy's like, 200. And no, wait, he just took out another 100. And Spandam, however you pronounce his name, director, is just like, what? Repeat that. There's no way one man is taking out all of you. And the guy at the base is just like, uh, no, yeah, not 200. That's outdated. Uh, five, and then Buddy gets knocked out. So director's just like, ah, five, that's not bad. He took out five before being captured. No big deal. Continues to be an idiot. Again, we'll talk to him in a minute. Um, and then it's guy down there. No, 500. So Luffy is just banging through and everyone else is just like, okay, I, we will catch up. So Gally La and uh, Frankie family storm the front gates, open it, even though it closes behind them, it doesn't matter, fights two giants and are doing amazing. So I love Oda putting the effort into establishing these secondary characters. I am completely invested in the safety of Gally La and the um, Frankie family, 100%. I love seeing them fight. I love seeing them overcome the enemies in front of them. Like, they bring down two giants. Um, then the, whatever you call the uh, control train uh, goes over the wall because they close the gates on them. And Zoro's just like, yeah, I totally thought of a landing plan. And they're like, what is it? We'll leave it to luck. I think in the anime, they say, uh, we fall. <laughs> And they crash. And despite me being incredibly anxious for them to save Robin, we Oda's always putting in these moments of humor that just land perfectly. I absolutely adore whenever Sanji and Zoro interact. It does not matter that they just fell from the sky, crash landed, should be really hurt from the landing. And everyone is just surrounding them they're outnumbered very intensely it should be high stakes and someone says like that's luffy's subordinate or whatever stooge uh pirate hunter zoro and sanji's like haha you're a stooge and then zoro's just like they don't even know who you are you're pirate a so they start fighting and zoro's like say whatever you want pirate b and then he calls them pirate c and they they're just fighting and we get Nami with her new weapon and an increase in lightning power, and it just works great. Um, what else happens? So much happens. We have Usopp, or Sniper King, getting left behind as they go off on Sodom and Gomorra, who are those two big bull, king bull sea monsters that have been now equipped for land, because why not? So they're plowing through trying to get to Luffy, and Sniper King is left behind, and he goes and he interacts with these two giants who are about to get up. Come to find out that they are from Elbath, Elbath, the same as the previous giants that we met earlier in the travels of Drum, no, Drum Island is where we met Chopper. Uh, Little Garden, Little Garden. That um, place where they were fighting that endless duel. The, they were at like duel 100 or whatever it was for thousands of years. And the giants had been lied to by the military who had told them that their captains had been taken hostage and are in the cell somewhere. And if they promise to protect this gate for a hundred years, 
then eventually all of, they'll let all of them go free. So they've been in this servitude based on a lie because their captains, because they were formerly pirates as well, are fine. They're out doing their duel. The government lied to them. So they get pissed and turn on the government and team up with the Straw Hats because honor, I guess. And I would imagine seeing how much Usopp respected and cared for the honor of Elbath and the other two uh, pirate captains. So they start going, help Galila and Frankie family, catch up with Sam Gamora, the two sea monsters, and one of them is taken down. So everyone's now, I think, on Gamora, who has been blinded. But these two sea monsters are so loyal to the Frankie family and want to save Frankie for the debt that they feel they're owed to them and being cared for. I am emotionally invested in these two sea creatures. So when the first one went down, I was heartbroken. And now the other one's blind, about to run into a wall and everyone is freaking out and Zoro looks to Sanji or Sanji looks to Zoro and is just like, do you see a dead end? And he's like, I don't see anything. And the two of them just chop down a building, I'm pretty sure, to get them to the courthouse. And uh, Gamora just collapses, exhausted, but he got them this far. Uh, the sumo frog holds open the, I was going to say door, but it's not really a door. Uh, Zoro just kind of chops a big solid block door in half. He's like, let's, come on, we gotta go. We gotta catch up with Luffy. So they run in and Galila and Frankie family are holding off the swarm of Navy that are trying to get into the courthouse to follow them. Uh, meanwhile, half the... So many of Frankie family goes to one area of the tower, the other half go to another area of the tower to pull levers to bring down the drawbridge to get them to where Robin is. Uh, Luffy has made a more or less direct path, maybe got lost a few times, but he is heading towards Robin. So he gets to the roof of the courthouse first, where he meets the door door fruit guy, Blue, Blue No, um, and they fight. And this is a fight I'm very invested in because, again, the original uh, CP9 agents that we were introduced to, I was so angered by their betrayal because I loved them when they were undercover as um, the shipwrights. I thought they had cool character design. They were really powerful. They were right chill. I loved how everyone cared about Iceberg. And then they betrayed me. And I hate them for it. And I'm probably best to talk about it here. My intense anger, very intense anger for Lucci has decreased slightly. I still love him as a character and as a villain and he is a very well done villain and I still hate him. But the anger was because of how much he terrified Robin and how he treated everyone around him, contrasting with how Luffy cares so much for his crew and good people and being a good person and being a good captain. And this man is just like a care about pigeon. Everyone else can just die. And he doesn't care about his teammates, future teammates. That intern got, not intern, recruit was nothing to him. Spending five years at Water 7 and the people that he met and worked for and cared, should have cared for there meant nothing to him. So an emotional, brutal guy who just cares about killing people. I hated him violently in the moment, but now he's just like a cool villain guy. That hatred that I have now has moved to his superior, the director Spandum, however his name is pronounced. Hate it, Lucci, because he was just basically being rude and snippy and taking Robin away. I hate Spandum because he is how looking for the correct words, incompetent, a coward, an idiot. Uh, so many other terrible things. How he got into a position of power. I didn't know your father could just be like, give him my title because I said so. But, and then he punches Robin. And he kicks Robin. And he insults Robin. And I want this man to die. 
he gets punched in the face many, many, many times, and I'm very glad for that. So this man has the transponder snail given to him by a Admiral Alkiji. Might be saying that somewhat, right? Uh, the golden transponder snail that can do the buster call. And he's threatening to use that. And it terrifies Robin. And I hate this man. So ranking of full metal alchemist guy, you know who it is. And now this man for people I hate. Um, what happens next? He being the idiot who thinks monkey give me my friend back D. Luffy uh, is been taken down and only took five people with him. That just shows how big an idiot this man is. Uh, thinks all everything's hunky dory. He knocked the transponder snail off his desk, which is just hilarious, and was done many was done before as well. Um, finally, finds out what is happening down at the front gates, and it's just like, what? What do you mean five hundred people gone? What do you mean like a couple thousand people gone? Looks outside and's like, how the hell? is Luffy on top of the courthouse. Why is Bluno down? So the fight between Luffy and Bluno was just great. Again, I love that door door fruit. Um, and seeing Luffy go to gear two. This is now Jessica being an idiot because how did I not think that Luffy wouldn't get any power? Why didn't I consider Luffy getting a power up? Because like... Naruto, you have plenty of transformation, sage modes, uh, the Rasengan, throwing the Rasengan. There's so many, like, power-ups in the show. Dragon Ball, you got Super Saiyan. Clearly, you got power-ups. The Shoujin, no, Shonen, sorry, anime action ones that I'm aware of, everyone has power-ups. Why didn't I think that Luffy could have a power-up? I'm an idiot, apparently. So, Gear 2 happens, and... Absolutely love that. Um, was very confused at first because it's just like I decided to get stronger is kind of how it felt like. I didn't see a lead up to it. There was no training. It was just like I got a new move that I want to try. It's almost like it happened off page, but not really. So when he met them back with the Foxy Pirates, uh, Admiral Alkiji, he got stomped and is like, I need to get stronger to protect my crew and the people I care about. And it seems like whatever he can think of, the gum gum fruit kind of allows him to do. So the pumping of the blood to increase energy and speed and power, and then ordinarily it would like burst someone's heart, but the gum gum fruit allows his body to be able to take it. Um, that's just a cool power up. I'm happy to see it. I got no complaints at all. Watching Bluno fall was perfect. Oh my god. I really love that fight. Again, I'm going to like the fights with the original CP9 members because they betrayed me and I'm connected and invested in them. The new CP9 ones that were introduced to, not so much. Don't really care for them at all. I'm not invested in them. I got no emotional attachment a betrayal with them. I would prefer they weren't actually there, honestly. Uh, what happens next? So, Usopp, uh, Sniper King, riding with the giants, gets thrown up and lands on top of the courthouse. Bad landing. And then uh, Sanji and Zoro and Nami and Chopper all come up from the base to the top of the course, and they're all on the rooftop. And just before they show up, Luffy is singing out to Robin. Just, he has like, one of my favorite lines I think around this point is like, I don't care what happens to the world or the government, just give me Robin back. And when uh, the director brings out Robin, she just says, go home. Like, I don't want to be saved, go home. I just want to die. And that hurt me because they've come all this way. And again, she's telling them to leave. And I am frustrated because Robin, they are there to save you. They have come this far. The government agency people have already broken their promise because they have every intention of killing the Straw Hats now. 
because their words were, we promised we would let them leave Water 7 safely. They've left Water 7. Our deal is done. And Rob's like, no, the heart of the agreement was for you to let them go, but they're not going to do it. And I, I don't understand at this point, after the government's betrayed her, why she won't just let them save her. I guess she still doesn't want them to face a buster call. Um, and Luffy's just like, I don't, he's like, I don't get it. That's stupid. We're here to save you. We are going to save you. If you still want to die after you are safe, that's your own business, but you will look us in the face when you do it kind of thing, when you make that decision. And ugh. we get Robin's backstory. And yes, it made me cry. So what happens, we see Robin as a kid, she's already got her uh, devil fruit powers, and everyone thinks she's a monster and a demon. And she is in a neglectful home with a um, aunt, I guess, who doesn't care for her. Her mother's brother is there and he's not sticking up for her. She's got no friends. And she is only really cared for by the... Um, uh, archaeologist, archaeologist, the name left my mind for a second. They are the ones who care for her, who gives her the books, and she studies because her mother has gone on an exposition to learn about the Pontoglyphs. And she thinks if she learns how to read the Pontoglyphs, then she can go with her mother to when her mother comes home, be helpful and have a place to belong because that's all she wants is a place to belong. Um... But the other uh, archaeologists are just like, it's too dangerous. And they get angry when they learn that she now knows that they've also been studying this 100-year gap in the history and the Pontoglyphs. And they know the dangers, but she's just a child and they want to protect her. So no, you can't do this. So what happens is she runs off and meets a... Uh, someone who's been washed up, another giant from a different place than Elbath uh, named Saul. And they get it talking. And that reminds me, one of the things I'm loving about um, this arc of One Piece is just everyone's laughs. So Saul's laugh versus the guy with the zipper starts with a K, cha -pa -pa, his laugh. I love the laughs in uh, this series. So Robin is talking to Saul, and we learn that Robin's mother has come back. She's escaped from the government's prison, and the government is now coming to destroy uh, the island of Ohara. And we get Robin and the tree, and the government takes all the... Uh, takes everyone hostage, more or less, lines them up, and are burning down the library, which, whether it was an accident or not, I'm very upset about. Then Robin is reunited with her mother. She learns the truth that this is her mother. But the mother is just like, I don't want her to be the daughter of a criminal. So she denies her. And Robin just screams out, like, don't you remember me? Uh, I've gotten bigger, I've grown, but it's still me. It's still Robin. And eventually the mom just like accepts her and holds her hand and gives her a hug and is just begging her, gives her over to Saul. It's like, I need you to live. That is she, the screaming for her. Just live, Robin. As she goes in to the burning library to help save the books that the other... Uh, archaeologists are throwing into the river in desperate hopes that they will survive to pass on the history of the world to the next generation. While they had been outside, the previous director of CP9 had allowed the heads uh, guy to speak with the other government overseers. And it's revealed that the hypothesis, hypothesis, hy is that during the blank spot in history, there was a different government uh, and a people and an island that were really powerful, but they had an enemy. And this enemy 
we suppose is the current world government who wiped them out. So they knew they were about to be wiped out. So they wrote their history on the Poneglyphs. And that's what the government doesn't want people to know that their foundation was based on, or their, yeah, the foundation was destroying another complete island. And they don't want the truth to be revealed. And then of course you also have the ultimate weapon involved that now Robin can activate. So Robin goes with Saul against her will. She's screaming for her mother um, and has to escape. And they meet the then Vice Admiral Alkiji or Kuzo Zun. Um, and this is what I don't, I love, but I don't like about him, which is a, makes him a good character. Um, he says something to Saul about justice and what's right and wrong kind of thing. And Saul had been a previous admiral or vice admiral as well, but he went to the government guy and asked questions like, why are we attacking these archaeologists? They're just doing, they just want to do research. They don't seem dangerous. If their research could be so dangerous, why don't the government do some like oversight for it? Because it's just research. Like, tell me why. And they're like, it's none of your business. And the government is, then says, we're going to do a buster call on O'Hara. We want you to lead it. And Saul's like, well, I'm going to be the one killing these people. I should know why. And the government guy is just like, you're questioning the world governments. You can't do that. And that's what led Saul to break out to Robin's mother to get to O'Hara. And now he's washed up there. So when Alkiji shows up, it's he sort of tries to talk reason in him, but he's not having any of it. And... Then one of the ships that have like evacuees who have nothing to do with this at all, it's just the regular citizens, is blown up during the um, buster call. And Al Kiji's just like, he's got this other admiral, he's gone too far, I would never do that, except he's complicit in this by still participating in the buster call, by still killing Saul. And you have Robin who is begging, who had been begging to stay with her mom. Like there's no one out there for her. She's alone. Um, and Saul is just like, you have to go. There are people, no one in, is, in this, is in this world alone. There are friends out there that will stand by you no matter what. So you have to get away. You have to live, Robin. So while Kiji kills Saul, Robin runs to the raft that he had been making. And there is again Alkiji. And I'm just like, you... I don't understand his motives because he's like, I will let you go to see kind of what happens. But if you turn against the government or you become an enemy or something, I'm going to come after you. I'm not your ally. And so Robin goes off. And next you see her with multiple families and she does what she has to do to survive. And no matter where she goes, she is betrayed. So she's betrayed for the bounty. She's betrayed because it's just too tempting to not turn her in. So she goes to pirates who already have bounties on her. But when they get in a stuck in a bind, they're like, we can't escape. Give, give them Robin. If, they, if we give her Robin, then they'll let us go. So she's just betrayed over and over and over again. And that is the final straw that we finally realize why she won't accept Luffy and them's help. Because she would rather die than live long enough to be a burden to them to the point that they would betray, betray her. That she's not worth keeping around. And revealing all this to Luffy, he's like, I finally understand. You think that I would not fight the world for you. That you are not worth 170 allied nations of the world government raining down on us to get to you. And eventually we would betray you and turn you over to them. And Luffy's response to this is to turn to Sniper King and say, target that flag. And they burn down that flag and declare war on the world government for Robin's behalf. She's like, give us Robin. So she is in shock watching this flag burn and seeing that these are her people. These are the people that Saul was talking about, that they will go to war for her no matter what. They are her friends. 
And Luffy just screams again, Robin, I still have to hear you say it. There's something I still need to hear you say. Tell me you want to live. And she's just like, I, I didn't know this would ever be an option, but yes. Let me hope. God, yes. Take me to see. Let me live. I want to live. She screams it. And Luffy and the crew are just like, all right, we're going to go get her. So um, Frankie, who this time has been with Robin, and I have forgiven him completely for his involvement with the beating up of Usopp. Uh, and mostly because it's like your existence is not a crime and all he's been saying about to Robin about the crew coming to get her. Um, he also makes a very emotional decision, which I really love. So he had the blueprints for the battleship ultimate weapon on him this time and had decided like he had these weapons so that if the government ever had R Robin, then they have a counterbalance, a counterweight to fight against them. And he needs these blueprints to fight against the government. But if he gets taken as well, then the government's going to have the blueprints. If the government has Robin, then they're going to have the ultimate weapon. He bets on the Straw Hats. He's like, I bet you that they are going to get their friends back. And therefore, I'm not going to risk you having these blueprints. So he would rather set those blueprints on fire and not have that counterbalance for if the government gets Robin, then they have nothing to fight against. He would rather burn the blueprints to 100% make sure that the government does not get those because he's betting that the Straw Hats will save Robin. He's betting it all on the Straw Hats. He gets thrown over the end of the tower and uh, the train comes through uh, Straw Hats jump on the train, gets Frankie, and they go into, I think it's the Tower of Law. Uh, and then you enter the whole issue with the keys as um, Fukuro. There we go. It was bugging me that I forgot his name because I did actually like him a little bit. Fukuro explains that you got to get the, man the Sea Prism manacles off, Robin. We all have a key. You got to fight all of us. Luffy wants to go fight him, but Zoro directs him to go after Robin and the Pigeon Man to save them. I don't actually have too much to say about the individual fights. Like I said, I liked Nami's new weapon. I liked uh, the, I liked Zoro having to use Usopp as an actual sword. That was hilarious. I like Chopper's uh, new form, no, new form. Uh, when he takes too many of the rumble balls, he turns into this monster, which is just awesome, but terrifying. And he's could hurt his friends and he doesn't recognize uh, anybody, friend or foe. And he's just a destructive monster. So that's really cool. I love Frankie with his cola. I... Love Sanji's new uh, foot, fire foot demon thing going on. Uh, that Okay, back to Zoro and his sword. So when he was stuck in the chimney before, he had said, like, that sword is haunted. Uh, he can always sense where it's to. One of his new techniques that I've seen had the name demon in it. So there was the six arm technique. I really, really feel like something demonic is going to happen with Sanji and I'm, not Sanji, with Zoro. And I'm completely here for it. Can't wait to see what happens there. Um, I liked with the original CP9 agents, they get some devil fruit powers. So one of them turns into a giraffe, which he's just like, giraffes are cool. I love this power. And everyone's just telling him how lame it is. So I love that. Do, I do feel parts went on too long because I wanted to get to Robin. So uh, Lucci, who I have come to love as a villain, uh, allowed the little granddaughter and her rabbit cat thing, it's a rabbit who thinks it's a cat because she thinks it's a cat, uh, to follow after them down a secret tunnel while the director is dragging Robin. I hate this director. He, of course, punches Robin again and drags her down. Um, so Lucia allows them to follow because I think he just wants a good fight. And when uh, the director's like, no one can know we're here. He's like, yeah, the kid was following us a little while ago. She's gone to probably tell the strats how to get here. And the director's like, why didn't you stop them? He's like, you didn't order me to. Because, you know. 
Uh, and Robin, through all this, has not given up hope for the Straw Hats to save her. Once that um, switch has flipped in her, now that she wants to live and believe that they're coming for her, she never loses that faith again. It is, they're coming for me. She hears Luffy calling her name at one point. He's coming for me. No matter how many times Fonda says, like, no one's coming for you. You're not worth it. They can't save you. They can't get past CP9. Every time she's just like, yes, they can. Yes, they will. They're coming for me. Um, she, he drags her across the, the bridge, like, feet from the point of no return. She's like, no, no, I just need to buy a little more time because they're coming for me. So she gets away. She bangs her head or arm or whatever into him and she tries to flee, but he knocks her to the ground. So she bites into the cement, blood coming from her mouth, just like holding on with every fiber of her being. They're coming for me. I just have to stay a little bit longer, buy a little more time. Like I want to live. Trust in Luffy. They're coming. Luffy uses gear three because apparently gear two wasn't enough for this chapter to knock down the metal doors between him and Robin and goes down that passageway and eventually meets up with Lu Luchi and they have their fight and it was intense and I loved it. So seeing him use what we now know is like the shave technique to go even faster and again the blood's building up to increase his speed to be able to hit through the iron body. And then Lucci being like, okay, but even if you take me down, how are you going to save your friend? So he like floods the tunnel that they just went through that's going to uh, kill Nami and everyone in Zoro and Sanji and Chopper and all of them who are rushing in to get to them. Um, but Luffy is still just like, no, I, I trust my crew. They will find a way to survive it. But if I take my eyes off you, then you are going to go kill them. So no, like I, we are doing this fight. And again, gear three to increase the size and power of his fist. He punches Luchi through the wall out onto one of the warships. Um, because, oh, I completely forgot to mention this when I was talking about the director Guy Spandam. He being the idiot that he is. Uh, tries to do a transponder thing to see what's going on out there, ends up accidentally doing a buster call. So Robin is freaking out and she is just like, everyone get off this island. Um, the buster call, no one's going to be left alive. Uh, but he's just playing it off like, I totally meant to do this. It's fine. No big deal that I didn't do this. So the buster call is on its way. Lucci has gone off and Falling out with one of the warships. And they're like, damn, this is Rob Lucci. Please don't kill us. And Lucci doesn't care because he's just interested in fighting Luffy. Uh, Frankie is the one who got past uh, Lucci because Luffy was distracting him to get to Robin. And that's another thing I love because Luffy is still royally pissed at Frankie for the dissolving an issue and everything that's his fault that um his crew is broken and Usopp had left but so he doesn't like Frankie but he trusts him enough to work with him to let him go to save Robin so Robin is on the bridge uh Spawn guy pulls her off and is bringing her to the gates so there's no going back after this point and then all of a sudden shots rain down fire and explosions and Robin's able to get a little bit of a way and you look up and it's Usopp or Sniper King up on top of the tower shooting down at them to give Robin a chance to flee and then uh the idiot that is that director is just like well we need her alive but you know what shoot name to kill so they fire bullets at Robin and Frankie is the one who takes those shots because his metal body takes it all and finally, Robin is safe. They get the keys to her. They unlock the manacles. And I could watch, I have a full volume of just her hand smacking this uh, CP9 director because that was perfect. Um, through the tunnel, which is flooded, so everyone's stuck in that flood. They are saved by a mermaid because it's One Piece. I'm just going to roll with it. 
Kokoro, whoever she is, the conductor lady, crazy lady, grandma, has been a mermaid all this time. From She's a nice mermaid. I think she mentions Fishman Island, which I think was where the shark Arlong was originally from, his people. So we're going there eventually, I'm sure of it. Very excited for that. Um, and yep, she's just a mermaid. So she gets them to safety through the, the tunnel before they have time to drown. And now Robin and Frankie and everyone is on this uh, moor ship and they're going to use it to escape. Um, one more time, one more thing before I go into the finale of this arc is going to be, um, there was a moment when they were, on, when Luffy and, and Lucci were on the battleship that one of the admir admirals was just like, Straw Hat Luffy's there. I'm sure Lucci could survive this. Blow up that ship. And another Marine is just like, hey, we have a thousand um, Marines or a thousand men on this ship. We can't just blow it up. The Admiral guy just shoots him in the head or Vice Admiral, whoever he is, shoots him in the head. And it's just like anyone else questioning my orders, fire on that ship. And they burn the ship down. They destroy it. So most likely sacrificing their own men in an attempt to get Luffy. And it's just showing that a buster call is indiscriminate. There's no limit to the number of people or who's going to be hurt. The first one destroyed everyone on O'Hara, including the innocent civilians on an evacuation ship. This one, they're willing to, to kill their own men. It is just brutal. You can see why Robin hated it and why it's so bad. Uh, Luffy is having a final hard time taking down Lucci. He is exhausted from using Gear 3. And... He's down for the count. Sniper King takes off his mask and it's Usopp. And he is screaming at Luffy like, what the hell is wrong with you? You're going to lay down, be done? Fine. Uh, Luffy, come after me. I'll take you on. And Luffy is just like, no, he'll kill you. Usopp, you're, you're here. You came. He's very happy to see him, but like, no, you can't be doing this. He's going to kill you. Stop it. Um, and... Usopp's not having any of it. It's like, well, then you get up. What are you going to do about it? Don't act like this is over. Don't act like this is the afterlife. We may have already, we may be going through hell, but this is not hell. Like we can see the sky. We can see the ocean. Just get up. And so Luffy gets up and he swears that he's not going to fall down again until Luchi is done. He's going to protect his friends and he's not going to fall down. And I think that's his handled actually a little bit better in the anime because there's a moment where he stumbles, but he doesn't fall. He's like, no, I told you I'm not going down. So again, with everything he has, he takes down Lucci. And when he does, it's just like announced, Rob Lucci is down. The strongest man ever to go through CP9 has been defeated by Straw Hat Luffy. And just cheers from the Straw Hats. But Luffy falls. He is spent. He can't get back up. And um, Usopp is just like, come on, get cross, cross this little space, gum gum fruit over, we'll carry you the rest of the way. But he can't move. The buster call is in full force. It is destroying everything. And the other admiral, admirals and vice admirals and marines are swarming them. They're going to take Robin back. Of course, it will be over the Straw Hat's dead body. But they, they got no way out. They got no exit plan. Their warship gets blown up. Um, and I, I don't know what's going to happen at this point. And then Usopp hears a voice saying, look below. And Frankie thinks he's hearing the Frankie family scream because we had thought they were all dead. But he's like, no, no, it's a different voice. Look below. And then all the other straw hats look down, look below, look down, look below jump into the ocean and on a Zoro's just like that's crazy we'll die and Usopp's just like no we still have one more crew member we're not alone jump into the ocean Robin can you use your powers to throw Luffy into the water she's like yeah I got this leap of faith they all fall into the ocean and are caught by the Mary the going Mary has come all this way to save them um, uh, they are still surrounded by this 
sleep battle warps that's going on. But Sanji had the forethought to close the gates of justice. And that causes the whirlpools to go in. And they're stuck in the whirl whirlpools. And Nami's just like, guys, there is no sea that the, the Mary cannot cross. And I am our navigator. I got this. So she sails them out to safety. Then you have them finally sailing away. They're safe. And the rest of Galia La and Iceberg are coming up upon them. And everyone is just so happy because they've got the Mary. Robin is back with them. She's said thank you. They're just all relieved. And then the Mary cracks in half. And I... I expected it, but I wasn't expecting it to happen here. Um, so they're like, Iceberg, you have to help us. You came just in time. It's a miracle that you're here. Fix the Mary. She's come all this way. She saved us. Fix the Mary. And he's like, I can't. I'm looking at a miracle right now. Because during that previous big storm, I had come across the, the Mary and I had heard this voice saying, I want to sail. I want to sail one more time. So the going Mary had reached out to Iceberg because she or it had wanted to get out to save them. So he had patched it up just enough for it to survive. Not even enough to survive that far. He says it's a miracle that uh, she made it to them. Um, but now she's at the end of her life. It's her time. And Luffy and the crew accept this. I haven't accepted this, but they, it's fair that they, the Marys had a good life and they have to watch it burn. So they set it on fire saying that, saying their goodbyes and the ship just goes up in flames and that's all she wrote. I do not know why... I am very much emotional over that ship. I cried two times very hard during reading this uh, manga. The, the shooting down the flag and Robin's reveal for her thinking that the Straw Hats would eventually betray her and she would rather die than live to see them betray her. Um, and the going Mary. I was very invested in this ship. So they say their goodbye. And that is where this arc ends. As the Mary was thankful for being able to go on these adventures with them and them apologizing for not taking better care of her and just saying goodbye. Um, so needless to say, I am very much invested in One Piece and seeing where it goes next. I can't wait to read the post and a slobby arc there. I am going to probably switch exclusively to the manga unless, of course, the manga ends up being consistently this fantastic. I feel like Water 7 and Ennis Lobby has to be a peak. But that being said, every arc or, and every, or every saga of One Piece have just been getting better and better. So if it tops Water 7, I don't know how that's possible. I might have to watch the anime for all of it going forward just because I need to experience that. But otherwise, I'm going to be reading the manga exclusively uh, and just popping over to anime for a couple cool moments. Um, that's all I got. I will talk to you later.